Attorney General Chris Coster and investigative reporter Lisa Zygman both had their voicemail hacked. It was all part of an effort to expose some serious vulnerabilities with smartphones. And tonight, in an iTeam exclusive, Lisa joins us with details every smartphone user needs to hear. Lisa? Mike, the British hacking scandal raised the question, how easy is it to hack into voicemail? I teamed up with Michael Gregg of Superior Solutions in Houston. He had my permission to try and hack into my voicemail, and he also had the permission of Missouri Attorney General Chris Coster. It is a disturbing violation, but what is even more disturbing is that it's easy to do, and experts say the phone companies know it. From a hotel room in Atlanta, Hi, Lisa. And Michael Gregg hacked into my voicemail late at night. Greg points out all kinds of alarming scenarios that hit way too close to home. If someone was potentially in a position where they wanted to stalk someone, they could figure out where they're at, who they're talking to, who their friends are. If we're thinking about people like government officials or even people that work for the military, they could potentially intercept those phone messages. Or it could be even for the corporate executive talking about the next big deal. Is there going to be a merger? Is the stock going up? Is the stock going down? My KSDK phone is one thing, but could Greg hack into a state phone? used by Missouri Attorney General Chris Coster. From his hotel room in Atlanta, Greg went to work again, hacking and recording messages. Hi, Chris, this is Pam. Can you give me a call in the office? I have something I need to discuss with you regarding a, a scheduling issue. Thank you. Hi, Chris, it's Sherry. And how long did it take you to get into mine versus the Attorney General? Uh, yours took maybe, you know, 30 seconds, a minute. Uh, his was 10, 15 seconds and I was in. When the experiment was suggested, I had a suspicion that you were going to be able to crack the code, but I was shocked at how quickly it happened. What is even more alarming is that you don't need a high level of expertise to crack into voicemail. They're accessing your, your account. They're actually listening to your messages. And, you know, unless you figure this out by some ways, you're never going to know they've even done this. Whether you are at the top levels of law enforcement or business, or whether you are a homemaker, you take your personal privacy to the maximum level, and everybody deserves the maximum level of privacy. There are federal laws against this type of hacking, but Coster says that shouldn't give you any sense of security. With regard to the federal law, I don't know that the federal government has the resources to really track this type of thing with, with prosecutorial resources as they are. At the state level, I have to say that I have concerns about the ambiguity of certain state statutes. Technology has leapt far in front of the wording of state law. Coster believes if your voicemail isn't password protected, it opens the door into your privacy. Greg believes the technology needs to have some type of controls, but many phone companies don't seem to agree. Both Coster and I had AT&T phones, and a spokesperson for AT&T Missouri said, AT&T takes the security of our customers and their information very seriously. Customers have a choice to use a password when calling voicemail from their own phone, but we do not require this. We strongly urge our customers to use a password for their voicemail boxes under any circumstance. Greg is called a white hat or ethical hacker who is hired by corporations to expose and fix security flaws. He says our experiment exposes very serious flaws. And I mean there are fixes for this. One easy fix would simply be to require when people sign up for a service that it forces them into using a strong pin and not uh, the situation where there's no pin or actually they're a weak pin, you know, something like one, two, three, four. Coster agrees with Greg, saying this experiment well, I'm going over to a friend's house. shows oh, just how vulnerable we all oh, yeah, are. To to from the couch. You don't have to wait for government or phone companies to fix this. You can do it yourself, and I am posting how-to directions for T-Mobile, AT&T, and Sprint on KSDK.com. Verizon already requires users to set up and use a voicemail pin when they buy a phone. So, so Lisa, let me get this straight. So, someone with bad intentions, yeah. if they try to hack into my voicemail, your voicemail, our viewers' voicemail, it's not really against the law? Well, no, there's a, there's a federal law, but Coster says that, uh, you know, with resources, there's not going to be a lot of prosecution in that type of law, and he's very concerned about Missouri state law. 
There are products that you can buy online for as little as $10 that will let you hack into voicemail. So Coster wants to strengthen those state laws, and he's going to hold a summit in October. He wants lawmakers, consumer advocates, and the public, and he hopes representatives from phone companies to weigh in on some long-term fixes for what is a serious problem. And just tonight, AT&T let me know that they will attend that summit.